All right, hello again, everybody. It's Doug here with the LincolnList.com. We're going to do another trade recap, another solid day, over 1K in gains, and looks like we're going to finish up in somewhere in the mid-25s this month here for the month of June of 2016. That would put us at only one month this entire year, which was May, that we finished just slightly under the 20K mark. So that's a really solid average, and that kind of shows you... It's not just about the gains, but it's shown you the different kind of markets. And I talked about this in some of the past videos. You started out January with a complete sell-off into February. Then from February, you know, on in, into May, we had a complete melt-up, a pullback, and then another one. So we've seen a flat market, a bearish market, and a bullish market. No matter what it has been thrown at us, we've been able to use our strategies to make a rough estimate of about 22 to 25K a month. So if you're looking to just be a consistent trader, it's not about the gains, it's about being consistent. That's what this game has always been about. Visit the LincolnList.com and take a free trial. The day was highlighted today by MAPA. I like love pronouncing these ticker symbols, so I'm just going to call it MAPA, M-P-A-A. -A. Now this was an earnings play, and and... I wouldn't call this a tier one. It wasn't the standard setup where it was a gap and go, which is really one of my favorite kind of shorts is when a stock is really super extended with all the euphoria in the morning. This one kind of did the dip and rip, which I posted a video not too long ago called the dip and rip trade. Now, this thing reports earnings, gaps down, and it, you know what? It doesn't even hit our scanners that we have in the trade room. It doesn't even hit that until the stock is roughly about 29 bucks. So I didn't see any of this move until it hit the scanner. But obviously, you, you start the day with this gapping down to 25.50. Then it comes up into here after it rips. You know, it just bounces pretty much from 25.50 all the way up into 28 to 29 dollars. Good, 10 percent move there. Then flags for just a minute. Let's open up this chart so we can take a look. And just kind of flags there for a second for about 15, 20 minutes. Then does this big para rip over high. Now the flag break parabolic, which you, you've got a standard flag on just about any any stock, is one of the better setups that I like. Is when it breaks through high a day and then not just busts through high a day and then starts grinding, but really explodes, which is what this one did. So this was a good setup, but as I said, it wasn't really a tier one for me. It was more of a tier two because of the fact that it already had gapped down and then you're you're rallying, but still. What we were looking at and what I want to kind of make clear here that I've talked a lot about in these previous videos is when people think about shorting, they're, they're usually attacking stocks that's been up a lot. You know, they'll say just because a stock is up a lot means it should be shorted. Now, that's not my theory. I don't think that way. As I said in these past videos, to me, it's, a, it's about time versus price. It doesn't matter where the stock is going to end up. I'm only micro looking at each one of these moves and saying this move right here, this piece in time, this is an unsustainable move because what you have to understand is when a stock goes up or goes down, no matter what happens, when you see this big move, there comes a period in every stock that's going to need a moment to catch its breath and everyone's going to have to take a step back and try to assess the news or the situation or whatever. You know, that's just the way everything is in life. Stock's no different. So this thing breaks out up here and already at this point you've got close to a 20% move and the market's only been open for about a half an hour. So this is a pretty abrupt shift in this stock, which often earnings do. So as soon as it goes para, you know, I begin into a, a short here with, you know, a, about a thousand shares just to get it started, thinking, well, if we squeeze up a little bit more, I'll leave myself room to add, but we should get a pull. Now, one of the things that we were struggling with here, I shouldn't use the word struggle, but let me show you something. It's sort of like the double short, because what I was looking for here was once this red came in and you're getting short, you have a couple of options right here. One is you can use a starter position like I have, and you can prepare for the squeeze if it takes you into 31s, 31s and a half, because oftentimes they'll do that. Or once you get a pivot and a wick like this, then you can obviously, you know, size in bigger and use a very disciplined tight stop over high a day because you do have a, a pretty nice pivot right there. So that, there's two ways to make that trade each his own as, as the trader. So once we get this red, I'm expecting this to wipe out quickly to back down to 29, which was which was my target. Now that doesn't always happen. You know, I'd say about 
60 to 70 percent of the time that scenario is going to play out and one of the things that I'm why I'm emphasizing on this MPAA because if you watch some of the past ones you've seen them wipe out quickly this is something that's a little bit different this is part of what we talk about as well as in our trading room is idea execution and management you need all three of those as a trader so when you have your idea you get your idea you you know what you want to do you execute the idea and then the big piece of this trade comes with managing because there's going to be a bunch of these trades that work out for you right away that were easy then you're going to get these ones that are kind of difficult right and it's what you do with these tough trades that really this is this is what makes your makes or breaks your career we don't get that so what we do is you know we start haggling around in, in a flag and once we start breaking down here I actually add to this position doubling my size thinking we're gonna break this whole number as soon as we actually do break the whole number and the when I added I can I now have 2,000 and it kind of snaps back on me real quick and it starts to flag and this thing starts to perk up so I, I cut 50% of the position because obviously I was wrong and I still was looking at this number knowing that 30 was a really important level but once it geared back up and started going to high a day we now were stuck within this range of are we going to break 3084 to the upside or are we going to take out this 30 as long as it stays in between that we're still stuck in this we call it the doldrum right you're just you're stuck inside of this this range and then what happens is right as soon as it gets high of day it rejects quickly and this is something I can't show you right here in, in hindsight that you have to see it in real time that's why we trade live on screen you get a nice double top rejection but there was some good speed in these candles to the downside so a pretty good move here now it's even more clear about how tough that 3080 is up towards the top how important of a level that is and then once we come back down here and we fade and I re-add to the position and you know really came down to what we just discussed a minute ago that 30 at, at some point in this chart during the day you will either lose the you'll either take out the 3080 and squeeze higher or you're gonna lose this 30 and go a little bit lower and as soon as that happens you know you, you get a couple of back and forth but once you really get clean of that you know it took a little bit of time but once you broke down on that trade you got a really sweet move down just below the VWAP which was about a buck you know so the that trade went for a couple of grand but of course I had a, a little bit of a loss that I had to make up with it but you can see the difference I guess what I'm trying to point out here is you know the trade doesn't always well not a, a lot of times they just don't go as planned right you want to get in a trade and you want it to work perfectly every time you're gonna have a handful of those just by following your process but where you make your real money is not being shaken out and I think you know what I mean if you've traded for any length of time we all know where you just like oh I got fooled and I'll show you I got fooled today as well you get tricked on these things and it's okay from time to time but you don't want to make a habit and I think when you're talking about professionals versus amateurs that's one of the standout points for pros is as you go deeper into your career you learn more about how the market moves and how stocks react and then you don't get shaken out as much you learn not to panic and a lot of that comes through proper risk management proper share sizing and understanding these moves and once you do enough of these then you're you're comfortable but this was a great trade now this was one of those ones I talk about here they're 50 50 after that it it did a good job about coming back up into highs and as I said when I'm short and I'm not saying that is junk or the stock is no good or it's going down I'm just saying this particular move right here this euphoric parabolic quick move out of the open is one of the best shorting setups bar none that you will ever find I mean there's so many amateurs that are jumping in on these stocks and they're the ones that are getting shaken out that's where you're making your money you're taking advantage of people that are getting shaken out that aren't prepared for this that are chasing these moves and this was, this was a great trade now we had a couple of others uh, as you can see here we started with the best let's talk a little bit about the not so good we, we, I just mentioned talking about getting shaken out I was shaken out here on this move almost the same identical move except for you know it didn't really gap down already gap down last night on this Baidu so that you know you're talking about a 148 to 159 and then after you open a 159 to 170 so you got a twenty dollar move from last night on this stock now one of the things that I was a little bit concerned about going into this one was the percentage move itself you know this is a hundred and sixty dollar stock right so when you go in parabolic here when you're looking at MAPA it's up you know 20% on the day this 
this Baidu is not, even though the move itself is high in percent since the close. You know, that's high in percent, but, you know, the actual move itself isn't. So there's still a lot of room. And it's almost just like a the, the, the MAPA trade where, you know, we get short up in here and it pivots down in here. And I don't take the quick gain and it comes snapping back. And, you know, I, I just stop out up here towards the high of day and I, I take the loss there about 400 bucks. Um, and it, it, obviously, you know, I got, I got fooled because it was only one bar later that the thing dropped back down and you can see by the time the day is over here almost look at this thing i mean it was complete opposite of mappa right where mappa went para you see it went para and it came down based turned around and made a high late in the day this thing sold off 10 bucks i mean a whole 10 dollars so you know uh, the same kind of setup there almost in both of them but you can see what i'm talking about being shaken out i just had a i, I had something was thinking that this thing could rip higher because it wasn't up overall a ton of percentage points through the whole day so i was thinking it could go five or six percent which would push this thing around 180 or somewhere and i you know of course that's what that's the decisions we make as traders so you know not too bad there on on baidu i took a shot here on something akao this is a trade i hardly ever make and i don't know why i did but you've seen a lot of these rips on cheap stocks lately and i did a big Speech there not too long ago about these junk stocks just flying, especially in the summertime. I tried to play this breakout, and I got to be honest, that's not one of my. That's just not my. That's not me, man. That's not my thing. I just couldn't. This thing just. I don't buy the Diggly or the Lake that rips. I get this thing. It just sells back off, but it it is what it is, right? I mean, what are you gonna do? You got to try. Sometimes you feel like, hey, you know, I, I think I can do it. I think it's got a good setup. It was legit. I kept at least I kept the losses small. I had some size on it, so you know. We definitely would have got smoked if I would have kept it all the way to four that I lost maybe about a nickel. And then the last piece was this EXAS up really here on, on no news. Just picked up a couple of bucks here. Again, this is just kind of like MAPA. What we're talking about is, you know, when you're shorting, you're not, you're thinking about this piece in time as a day trader. You know, if you're swinging, then the price entries and executions don't have to be perfect every single time. But this is a good point about what we're seeing when you're looking at Baidu and you're looking at Mappin and you're looking at EXAS, there's a handful that when you see this pair of action, maybe towards the end of the day, they'll make a new high. Maybe they'll make a new low. You don't know. But what we're talking about is that little piece in time, which is really what a day trader lives off of, that little piece of time that you're in that trade and you've perfected that time. And here, good good ramp up really from 7 bucks to 9.30 on really no news. So a nice move, got short here. Not one of my favorites, you know, I, I didn't put a lot of size. I only went 500 on this one. Just single-digit stocks. I, I got nothing against people that trade single-digit stocks, right? Single-digit stocks, we just don't get along. When I really get a fir first initial move on a stock like this, like, like an AKAO or a JAGX or a EXAS, I'm really hesitant to short the first day move because that's where the VLTCs, the Diggly's, the Lakes that we talked about, Gene, these things can smoke. And when you start getting a bunch of retail traders and algos and some of this stuff, they just get nuts. You know, it, they're account killers. You know, if you short Apple, as much as people love Apple, it's not going to go 300% on you in the middle of the afternoon. EA, EXAS could do that. You know, we saw that last week with several stocks. We're seeing it this week. So you, that's one of the reasons I don't. But a, a pretty good fade here too. Again, not size, but you don't want to. You can't complain too much about a winner. I, I waited actually for this one to pivot up here and give me a little bit of red, and then going short here using the stop and high a day, and then I just trailed down until I eventually got stopped out around you know eight dollars thirty cents or something. So it was like a sixty sixty cent trade or something. So you know those make it. You know every little bit counts. You know that's the thing about trading is sometimes you get in. You know a lot of people. On social media, they only talk about the big winners, but, you know, our career is made up of, you know, singles and doubles and and processes. You do your process, you'll hit some singles, you'll do some doubles, some days will be slow, and, you know, some days will be good. And then every once in a while, you'll just by a product of you doing what you do and being disciplined, you'll hit a home run. You know, that's what that's what it's all about. You know, you'll, you'll get a big trade, and, and that's all you need. You just need one good one a day. 
and and that's all you, all you need. You just need to stay focused and stay committed. So a little bit of a rundown there on some of the trades that we're working at. As I said, only one month so far that's under 20K. So the solid, consistent trading in all types of markets. It doesn't matter. The strategies are always going to be there. There's always going to be people chasing stocks. There's always going to You can short stocks in bull markets. You know, it's a great strategy to have in your toolkit to help you understand what short sellers are thinking and, and how all of this stuff works. So that's a nice little quick recap. As always, as I mentioned in the video, take a free trial at thelinkinlist.com. See all the trades made live on screen. Thanks for listening to me this long rumble about stocks. Take care of yourself. Talk to you soon.